All right, everybody. It's another week. We've managed to make it all the way here. We're still alive. Congratulations. And it's another very lively episode of One for the Table. <laughs> I am your host, who is doing the most, Kim Chi. And I am John Khan. Yay! <laughs> Key the theme song. Oh, that's not how it goes. No, it, the theme song comes first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, um, before we talk about whatever we're going to talk about, I want to talk about this like hot pressing issue um, that's happening in the uh, <laughs> L.A. fine dining scene. Have you ever heard about the restaurant called Horses? I have not heard of this restaurant. It's like this swanky fine dining where all the celebrities go to, and it's really hard to get a reservation. Uh-huh. Um, I guess they do like new American food like really well or whatever. Like it's got little gackalays, and the restaurant is owned by a, a husband and a wife, mm-hmm. and they're going through a divorce, and it's coming to the light that like they don't turn cats away policy, where like they just adopt a bunch of like stray cats. Okay, but for some reason. The cats kept turning up dead. And as it turns out, the husband kills the cats while gratifying himself. And even like the LA Times like confirmed it, like it's real. Wait, so he has this this restaurant owner of this really famous restaurant mm-hmm. in LA uh-huh. has a killing cat fetish? I guess, yeah. Isn't that fucked up? That is so messed up. What the I mean like I was so scared that you were going to say that he was putting it in the food and was serving it to people because like, why else would it be like restaurant related? Um, I guess it makes sense to talk about what they do, but I don't know. It frames it so weirdly to say like, oh, restaurant owner kills cats, touches himself. Uh Right. (laughs) But still. And I guess Ugh. like um, TikTok and Twitter is having like a field day with this. All these like memes are like this is so annoying. Me like, yeah. I don't get any of the good stuff on TikTok anymore. I totally did not see any of the British Chinese food drama. How? I didn't see it was any like of all this. Over. I don't know. I'm not getting TikTok is like low key blacklisting me from good content. Like that was literally like all there was like for everybody else. I know, and I didn't see any of it. I, I didn't like, see any like, of it. Oh, this kid is a fucking hipster. Like, <laughs> this content is like a little too popular for him. So I guess we'll show him some. Um, I don't know. What do you even get on your timeline? I don't know. Let's look. Like, let's look real quick. Like, what am I getting here? When mom tells me people don't like when I jump. Okay, well that is pit bulls. Okay. Very That's good. somebody's live. Uh, this is someone I follow. Oh wait, this is a- yeah. That's my for you page. Someone I follow. Um, I don't know who this person is, but he's, uh, I guess he's an Asian comedian. Add, so very you. Oh, this is yours. Hey, Vogue. I'm here looking for diverse models. I'm six foot three and I have sleep apnea. Watch this. I make that because I'm that guy. He's like, I heard. Um, <laughs> I heard you were looking for diversity, and I'm a model, and he's like a conventionally attractive white male. Yeah. But the storyline is that he used to have acne problems. <laughs> and I was like, what does acne have to do with diversity, bro? I'm kind of here for you advertising that you have sleep apnea. And I'm kind of loving the fact that that came up while we were going to, through this podcast together <laughs> on its own. <laughs> I'm going to like this really quick. Um... Yeah, so that, I guess, it's just showing me, like, my friends. This is Robot Combat League. This is a shirtless guy, but he's cooking, so I'm guessing that's why I'm getting that. Wow. Voguing competitions in Singapore. Ad. Um, review of Hamilton. Yeah, your TikTok timeline is boring. Fashion. My TikTok timeline is really, really boring. Have you talked about the British Chinese drama you're in the podcast? I think slightly with uh, Auntie Chan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I did actually come out with a curry fries video. Oh, did you? Yeah. So stunning. 
I know. Well, your thing is like I, I don't know anything about the Corey Soul. That's a bad Uh, British accent. You sounded like Wendy Williams. (laughs) 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 Some Corey sauce. (laughs) I did not sound like Wendy Williams, but yeah. So yeah, I thought to do a video, and I was just like, oh, I know it's nothing like the British version because they do like more probably Indian inspired curry, and they do chips, which is just like steakhouse fries. It's not Indian inspired. Have you ever actually had the curry sauce? No. I imagine that would be, though. At least Isn't it more spicy? when I had it. Yeah. So it almost tastes like when you take, like, water, and you just, like, melt, like, a cube of curry in it. But there's, like, no... Like a Japanese curry? Kind of, but, like, there's no, like, depth to it. Like, you know, there's no, like, vegetables or, like, meat stock or in it. So it just oh. kind of tastes like when you took, like, the seasoning, just, like, and put it in water. Oh, that doesn't sound very good at all. It's not like My what thing you was think it is, the curry sauce. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like a butter chicken sauce or like a vindaloo yeah. sauce or like a sag sauce. Yeah, I did um, crinkle cut fries. Mm. And I also did an experiment and did it with tater tots. I prefer the t- fries version, but people like my film crew really like the tater tots. I want to say something brave yet controversial. What? Tater tots. Go on. Are not good for loading it up with stuff. Ah, uh, like, I agree. Loaded tater tots suck. It's too much. But because it's also, always like, too the much. The tater tots get soggy like right away, and it just like yes. crumbles apart and like lose and all the crunchiness. Apart. Well, you Which, have like, to overcook the it. Of, like frying them in the first place. Yeah, no, you have to definitely overcook them and over fry them or over bake them to make them like almost like rock hard and have a crunchy shell. Mm -hmm. Um, so that they are a little bit more resistant to it. But tater tots definitely are not as good sauced as French fries are as in regards to like, you know, putting a curry fry or a poutine or poutine or um, yeah, any or even anything with sauce, like even vinegar, because it just soaks it right up. But if you did it like, if you did tater tots, overdid them, like overcooked them a little bit so they're hard. Um. And then you kind of season them like popcorn. I like a delicately that, seasoned, yeah, but that's different. That could be like a powdered seasoning. Mm-hmm. But most people's idea of like loading up fries is like gravy and cheese, cheese and like all that, and yeah, yeah, which yeah, makes yeah, them soggy yeah. very quickly. Yeah, but some people are just up for the uh, up for the the whole, I guess, the the mouthful of of tater and sauce. Yeah, they they're, they're down to eat this with a spoon. But yeah, I did it with Japanese it. curry, and it was good. I did it with golden curry, um, mm-hmm. and I did that with chicken stock, and it was it was like as far as like stoner food goes, it was good. And I topped it off, I topped it off with Mexican cheese, with made, which made it too salty. But I think if I did it with like crumbled paneer next time, or goat Ooh. cheese, or melted like even just like melted mozzarella, it would be really really good. Something mild. And did you get a little green onion for freshness on top? Uh, I did mix a green onion and cilantro. Mm, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional. I support loaded um, crinkle fries, just not loaded tater tots. I'm sorry, I cannot get behind loaded tater tots. Always crinkle fries. I will die on this hill. I mean, we can. I can try it. Oh, guess what came? What I got the other day? What? Um. And, well, well, I guess it's not, not not sponsored, but it was a gift. But Uni sent me a pizza oven. She looks so mad. No, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm a little envious. But also, so, if I had a pizza oven, I have nowhere to play, put it in my apartment. Yeah, you literally have no surface space in your kitchen or in your house. Yeah. But they sent me an electric pizza oven that I can use inside. So I can finally start to do my experiment to try to make... Um, Hu black Xiaoping. pepper buns, yeah, Hu Xiaoping. Black pepper bun for black pepper bun. listening. AKA Kim's like top three favorite thing to eat. Yes. Oh, you get all the cool PRs. Like the other day, John posted on social media. He got this like cool suitcase from um, Padma, Padma Lakshmi. Lakshmi. That had Lakshmi. all these like, different like spices in it and like all the destinations. She goes on like the new season of um, Taste the Nation. Which is a great show, by the way. Everyone should watch it. I'm on Especially the, uh, the Koreatown, Koreatown episode. episode. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and Spoons by H. May they rest in peace. Wait, did you do an update where you like ate their food somewhere? Oh, so 
Um, for API month, the JACCC, which is Japanese um, Arts Community Cultural Center. Sorry, just a mouthful. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, in Little Tokyo here in um, LA, they have this like beautiful Japanese garden. Mm. And in the building, there were each week, they're hiring like a different Asian chef and they're doing a pop up dinner. Spoon by H was the chef this week. So then she did like a five course like Korean meal, like done her way. Everything was really good. And if you ever had Spoon by H's food, like she does not so skimp on the proportions. So um, good. like I had a friend who went to like every other dinner and she said like this is the biggest portion out of like all the dinners <laughs> that she's had. And it's like something that you want to finish too. Like some of her, mm-hmm. her food has been like some of the most creative, some of those like just well executed, like Korean bistro food I'd ever had. Like halfway through the meal, I was like already full, but like I couldn't stop eating. First no, course so was um this like crispy, sticky salmon skin. Like in this like sweet garlicky soy like marinade, served on top of crispy rice paper, and then she served pork belly dumplings with like luscious juicy pieces of pork dumpling in like a little cilantro pickle salad, mm. and then like the next course was um duck garbi, which is like a patty formed out of short rib, and then she Ooh. served it with like a little um salad and like a pickled mushroom on top and then like the last course was like her bone broth which is like so clean but so complex if you've ever had it you know if you've never had it sorry about your life was it so long time bone broth so she used bone broth but then she used some um, short rib and then she also put like rice cakes and like Ooh, rice noodles yeah, and like dumplings good. and then like eggs and all that. Oh, it was so good. Oh, that sounds amazing. And I'm super jealous you got some. And then also like her desserts are also phenomenal. So she served these like um, salted caramel cupcakes topped with like salted caramel popcorns and just like cream cheese frosting. And the cake was so moist. I still remember her waffles. And I don't yeah. understand how she did it. Yeah, like so for those if you c- never had her waffles, you I've never had waffles like it, and I've never no same. I've never had. I can never find it. I wouldn't even know what to call these waffles. So they look like your regular waffles, but imagine like if the outside of the waffle was really crunchy, but the inside of the waffle was hollow. Yeah, it was like a lattice structure. Of a waffle shape, like it was, it, it was like it's so delicate, and it wasn't even airy. It was like air. So you, it was like a, it was a waff. It was a cage in the shape of a waffle made of crispy fried or crispy waffle made dough, and it was so good. I'm like, and they had it with the sweet cream and strawberries. It was mm-hmm. so good. The texture of it was just so. Crispy and airy and light. Oh my god! I'm so yeah, like, I'm to this day, like, constantly I'm like, upset that she's not her restaurant's not hit around. I think she's like looking to open up a restaurant, but you know, like opening a restaurant is not easy. You know, like no, especially in renting LA. the place, renting all the equipment and yeah. permits and. Mm-hmm. But if she were to open up a restaurant again, it would be such a roaring success. Oh, for sure, because <laughs> she had all these people, all these like. And it wasn't like just, I mean, like there's nothing wrong with like, you know, public opinion and stuff like that. But the people that like mourned her loss mm-hmm. were like foodies all over LA. And like, it's been how long, how many years has it been since she's closed? And we're still talking about it. Yeah. So Spoon by H is another one of those businesses um, that couldn't survive COVID, unfortunately. But the main reason why they couldn't survive COVID was um during COVID, they were doing like, pick up like meals but Mm -hmm. so many people would um like order like hundreds of dollars of food from her pick up the food and then dispute the claim or dispute the charge with the credit card company and saying like they never got the food even though they picked it up themselves so then like every month she was losing like thousands of dollars this way by people like scamming like food out of her so then eventually like she had to close down which is so fucked up. Yeah. Infuriating. 
And it was like, you know, that was terrible. And it was a lot. It was like a loss for LA. And if you know, if you've seen her food and if you've ever had her food, she puts so much love and care into like each of her dish and even just like two of food. Like she garnishes like everything by herself and she does it so beautifully. So for someone to, I mean, it's basically like edible art. So mm-hmm. for someone to like take, you know, like someone's like hard work and, you know, just to and steal just, it like, like that. Like and that, it wasn't you know? even like that. To get that kind of cooking on a mass scale, she cooks for you like you, she cooks for people like it was at her house. And like she puts love into her food and the skill and just it happens to have like a professional skill level. And so like you have that. It was really, really Mm -hmm. special. Um, And it's just a shame that not more people got to experience it because it was like, I can't talk that place up enough. That was the place that I would go to every time. Take from like corporates, you know, like that are that yeah. mistreat their workers and like earn right. like millions of dollars. But this is like a mom and pop business. Yeah. You know, like to just I curse the people like who did this like to her or to anybody else during like pandemic, because you know, mm-hmm. like you're struggling and you're hungry, well everyone else is struggling too, you know? Mm-hmm. Like fuck you. Mm. Anyways. We got depressing. On again. a brighter note, um, I did something <laughs> um, that was more fun too. <laughs> yeah, tell us, tell us about the other thing, Kim. Um, so I got to go to a gold gala. <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> <laughs> tell people what. Uh, do you know? Uh, so well, gold you gala know, is but like, like basically like a gala, gala to honor um, Asian excellence in media representation mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. Um, and it wasn't like an honor just to be like invited. Um, and first year they invited me, but the theme was like all gold. Um, and I didn't like have like a amazing gold outfit. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show up in some bogus gold outfit. So like, I didn't go, but uh, (laughs) this year the theme was like, you know, like cultural black tie. And I had a beautiful, like Korean inspired black dress. So I was like, this is the year I'm going to go. Nice. (laughs) Um, and I went and I had a great time. Um, I walked there, gold carpet, um, and when I arrived, um, all these celebrities were like lined up, um, like for their turn to the red carpet. But for some reason, they like brought me to like the front of the line, which made me feel like I was like somebody. <laughs> Amazing. Um, who did you skip? Who did you see? As who did you pass? Um. A lot of famous people who like I mean I don't want to like name them because I feel like like I'll be like <laughs> unintentionally shading them you know no but, like, but name everybody them, there though. was like all famous people you know like <laughs> Sandra O oh was being on her like Aquafina was there like the entire cast of you know like all the Asians and like every Netflix show was there um, Ross Butler was there oh my god he's so sexy in person who's Ross Butler Google him he was on oh, um, let me see. He played Reggie in um, Riverdale. He yeah, was in Thirteen Reasons Riverdale. Why. Oh, he is handsome. He's, Holy crap. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he was wearing like an all pink suit. And I had a pink mm. hair on. And it's like, we match. And I'm like, oh, why? Yes, we do. We match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Singaporean. Match these nuts. Anyways. <laughs> But the funny thing is, um, so I walked the red carpet, um, did press interviews, and there was about like thirty photographers there, you know, like all taking like photos. Um, none of the photos are to be found anywhere online. Oh, really? <laughs> but everybody they else's didn't... photo, like I see them, so I'm like, huh, interesting. And you know, big photo, what, what you walked the red carpet, they put up like a sign with your name on it, so you know, like they know who you are, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's not like. <laughs> Well, I'm I doing an image search for, like, for you. No, you've so got like, some. You're on Getty. Am I? Yeah, you're on Getty Images. Send me the link. Of you at Gold House. Send you just Google, Google you, Kimchi Gold House. Getty Images? Yeah, Getty. You're a the Getty girl. I'm going to upload it now because when I was looking, um, like, none were up. Uh, let me see. You can tell. Hold on. Let's see. When did they do it? I see nothing. What do you mean you see nothing? It's there. You sent me the link. I'm looking at it. Okay, fine. Here. Oh. See? You're there. 
I'm alive. You've got, there's so many of you. All you have to just. Uh, well, they sent, they sent me a link where it's like, here's all the photos from an event. Uh, and in those links, um, none of my photos were on there. <laughs> no, you're also on Alamy too. Um, that stock photo thing. So. All right. You're there. Well, that's cool. How was the food at the gala? Oh, so the food. So normally, like, these, like, gala food is, like, bogus, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Because they have to, like, feed mass amount of people. But the food mm-hmm. here was done by um the folks over at Chifa. Um, oh, and if you're I not heard familiar with Chifa, um, they do, like, Peruvian Chinese food. It's a really cool restaurant here, um, here in L.A. area. And then they recently opened up another restaurant called Monarch. Um, we do more like Hong Kong style cuisine, um, but both restaurants are like designed beautifully. The family did you get lomo satado? Hmm? Did they get given lomo satado? Um, so they didn't do lomo That's satado, but they oh. did like a, some sort of like a Peruvian chicken, which was actually juicy and moist. Mm, um, yummy. Especially for like a giant like gala like this. Like I was like impressed, and then appetizer they had like um different like vegetable dishes on the table, nice, and then like some like homemade sauces um that were all very good. It was funny because um you could definitely tell this was an Asian gala, um mm-hmm. because everyone was eating everything, but like the drinks <laughs> were not being as drunk as like the other like gals I've been to. <laughs> what do you mean the drinks weren't being as? Oh, like a lot of people were like drinking like non-alcoholic drinks, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought Asians did it. Like when we part, well, at least like in my experience, when I party with a lot of people, I guess it would be from Hong Kong. Like also Koreans, they drink a lot. Oh yeah, you know why they drink a lot? Because they mm-hmm. can't get drugs. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> like in Korea, like um, marijuana is. Charged like in the same level as like a heroin, you know. I and think in Hong Kong too, like, very similarly. And when it comes out, the celebrity of smoked marijuana, like it's like career ending for them. But people just think like marijuana is a drug. Drug is bad for you. Mm-hmm. Um, drugs are immoral. Like how dare you smoke marijuana? But they don't actually like look into like what marijuana actually does. And that's what happened with like Jackie Chan's son too. I think he was caught with pot. In in China somewhere, and then Jackie Chan had to like, produce, like say like a public apology on behalf of him and his family to like China and stuff for being up for for whatever he did. Yeah, so like, I mean, like I don't personally smoke pot, but like you know, I would not consider that like a drug. You know, like I mean, yeah. it's very like medicinal for a lot of people. It actually like has so many medical benefits, and you know, it doesn't well, don't need to go into hurt like your whole, body as. Right, right, right. But like, it doesn't hurt your body as much as alcohol does. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like a little like alarming that people would just like blindly listen to the government and not do their own research on it. You know? Mm-hmm. Did anybody at the gala like? Did you? F- oh my god! So I met um, a ton of people that I was like a fan of, and then like a lot of them told me like I'm a fan of you, which I don't know if they're just saying that like this is like a thing, but it's just like an LA thing. Maybe it's like oh, I love your stuff. Maybe, I, don't know, I but love your work. Maybe they're, yeah, maybe they're not. But like um, I met like Asuko, the comedian. Um, she's hilarious. She's so cute. I love her hair. I met Eric Nam. Oh my god, he's so cute in person. So <laughs> sweet. Um, Eric Nam. I'm looking him up. Johnny from NCT. And then uh, even at the after party, Aquafina came up to me and she's like, hi, I just want to say hi. Like, I love you. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Nam is cute. Oh, my gosh. Um, I love his music, too. I mean, he has such a great voice. Oh, he's so pretty. Yeah, you should listen to his songs when you get a chance. Yeah. He's also on the um, same episode of like, the uh, Taste of Nation, um, the Korean town episode. Mm. See, you got to actually be on the show. Yeah. I just got like PR and also like a brand deal to promote the show on TikTok. Oh, yeah, you got a brand brand deal too. <laughs> but you got to be on it, so But you got a brand deal too. <laughs> I did. So it's not a competition, <laughs> but like you're trying to like one up me. You got I'm not trying too. to one up you. It's just a, it's just, just like different things. You got to be on the show, and they gave and you got a work. nice suitcase and spices that you'll have forever. Yeah. And well, no, home. until 
not forever till I use them all up. And it's from the company that does my spices anyway, so I could get them if I wanted to. What about your uh, poor friend who's spiceless? Oh, I sent you my I spices. Feel, I, I feel said, wait, first of all, first of all, I sent you my spices like a few weeks before I visited you. And when I was there, they still had the plastic on them. So I know you didn't use them. Oh, my poor spiceless cabinet. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Not you ooh wooing. My life is so bland. <laughs> Oh, oh God! I'm just so tired of just <laughs> using salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Mm. No, but I actually want the suitcase. The suitcase is really cute. The suitcase is super cute. The suitcase is really, really cute. And if I didn't already have one, I would mm-hmm. have. I give it to Little John. So after I said the suitcase is really cute, you gave the suitcase mm-hmm. away to someone else. No, before you said the suitcase was really cute. Cre- before you told me the suitcase was really cute, mm-hmm. I had already given it to my boyfriend, who has no suitcase whatsoever. Meanwhile, you have nice how many suitcases? Uh, boyfriend privilege. <laughs> 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 nah. It's okay. Mm-hmm. My birthday is coming up. Your birthday is coming up. What do you want for your birthday? A suitcase. <laughs> what kind of suitcase? That a one, one of a kind. <laughs> <PR. laughs> I'll send a. I'll, su- I'll send a. Couldn't you just ask Padma Lakshmi? Aren't you guys mutuals? No, I'm not thirsty. I'm not going to ask for anyone for a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't need a suitcase. I have so many suitcases. I home. know you do. <laughs> um, I just I don't want any listener to think that I'm being serious. <laughs> no, no, that's true. And then during the gala, they like pulled me up to like go take like a photo. And, you know, like, when you're, like, in a gown and things, you know, like, it's really, like, cumbersome to, like, move around. Yeah. And then, so, they brought me up to, like, where the photo shoot is. Like, this is where the after party will be. Um, And then the ceremony was, like, almost over. So, I was like, all right, I guess I'll just stay here. And then I missed a dessert oh. that they were serving. What was the dessert? But luckily, they had dessert at the um, after party. Oh. And then they also What was the after a, party like? So um, the food was sponsored by Panda Express. So they had like a Panda Express bar. Oh, cute. And then they were serving like Wagyu dumplings. Panda Express has Wagyu dumplings? I think it's like for this event. Like they were. Okay. Did they um, have their orange chicken? They also had box of orange chicken and like a few other dishes. Mm-hmm. Panda Express was also being like honored at this gala. Okay. Yeah, for their like contribution to the American culture. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. Did you wear a separate outfit to the after party? Because, like, from what I see, sometimes, like, when people go to award ceremonies and stuff, they have a second outfit. Yeah, clearly, I don't That's... go to, like, enough of these because um, all the girls change into, like, mini dresses from, like, their gowns. Yeah. And I was, like, still in my gown, like, still having a hard time, like, moving around. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, oh, oh. <laughs> it makes ew. sense now. Y'all, 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 y- y- y'all go to many of these things. Ha, ha, ha. But even the guys, I think, did the guys even change a little bit? Some of oh, them, the guys didn't change, but the girls definitely did. Mm. Oh, it like, makes sense, especially if you're wearing like large, cumbersome gowns. Like, there's there are definitely like outfits to be seen in, and then there's mm-hmm. outfits to actually socialize party and dance in. in. Yeah. yeah, party in. And then I was um, actually invited to this, but I couldn't go. Oh, I, I wish you to. you should have came down for this. I couldn't. I was at my artist residency. Fuck the residency. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, and the funny thing is, um, so when there's that, I'm um, like the host of the event was like, um, so the more um important people are sat towards the front. So if you're sitting in the back, it is your goal to like make your way up like to the front. I can't and believe they like, like called them out. What? Right? <laughs> you're not supposed to the the quiet part out loud. <laughs> How is that like? dead middle so i was just like clapping and i'm like "Uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh i mean middle is really good or terrible (laughs) right exactly solid middle (laughs) right i feel like the people in the middle are like people of note of note (laughs) not a-list but like you know of note Mm, it's like yeah in some circles you're famous (laughs) (laughs) right 
and my table, um, I was sat next to um, Suge, um, who's a supermodel. Um, she's a, I've actually known her for years. And then the cast of Bling Empire NYC, which was oh, kind no of random, shit. but they were very nice. Who is the is did one did any of them talk about? Because I think one of them has started a chili oil company. Oh, um, she's from LA. Oh, oh, there Kelly, are two Kelly Bling, Bling Empires. Empire. Yeah, there are two. Um, and then they both did they both the get same canceled time because oh. Netflix just likes to um, <laughs> yeah, create things. What they do, cancel it. Yeah, that's that's them. I still have like Eric Nam's photos open. I'm gonna tell this. He's quick. beautiful. I feel like him. Oh, all right. Well, there's yours. Um, yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So it was overall it was a great experience. And then afterwards, we got to visit the gifting suite. And then, what was in the gifting suite? Tell me. Oh my god. Oh, there were like what did I miss out on. <laughs> <laughs> there were just a, it was like this giant bag um filled with um a ton of like different samples of like food and drinks and then um. And then a bunch of like Asian like skincare products and mm. oh my god I don't even yeah there yeah there was like a lot in there it was so heavy nice um did you drive or did you take a car oh or baby Uber Black Uber Black oh, okay you Rock have to Angels, arrive like taught me this but like when you're in drag only be seen getting in and getting out of Uber Black extra large. <laughs> It's true. Wait, what is that other? What is that other like more expensive rental car company? Oh, um, Black Lane. Black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are those mm-hmm. car, are those cars nicer or those are just Uber Blacks the same? No, they're like limousines. Oh wow! All right, well that's a lot. Um, I've you said one time. Um, I think it was like during COVID. Then I had to like go somewhere like far away, and that was like the only service I could get. Mm-hmm. Uh, it ain't cheap, but um, it does Down make bad. you feel real bougie. <laughs> Amazing. If you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. But <laughs> yeah, could you imagine that they don't they don't show any of the things? Like I have that app, and then I think I saw how much it was, and I was like, you know what? I could I could walk. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about your residency. Wait, wait, we should oh. take a quick break first and then Yeah, let's okay. take a quick break and then we'll uh we'll do that. But before we go on a break, have you ever had these? They're called wild protein chips. No. Oh my god, they're my new favorite snack. Not that what I are they much made to out begin of? with. But they're I don't think I'm doing like a paid ad. But yeah, <laughs> I know. You look like you're doing a paid ad right now. <laughs> no, I found this at Costco. It's like these buffalo style crispy chips. Made with but what are they made out of? Chicken breast, egg whites, and chicken bone broth. It's meat. Yeah, they're meat chips. Yeah, so it's like chicharron. Not at all, though. So, um, they look and feel like potato. Chips. Oh, holy crap! That looks just like a potato chip. Okay, hold on. Can you like read the nutrition info for me really quick? I'm. I know people don't care, but yeah. So, <laughs> each serving, ten grams of protein. Oh. No. Um, eight grams of carb, three grams of dietary fiber. Um, that ain't bad. No, for at snack, all. You know, yeah, it's right. What's right on potato chips? What is it called? It's called Wilds W I L D E W I protein chips. Okay, cool. And here, listen to the crunch. Oh my gosh, that sounds and from Costco. And the buffalo flavor is really good. Have you tried any of the other flavors? Mm, I don't. I haven't seen the other flavors. Okay, so I'm looking on Instacart. Um, we sound like we're sponsored by all these people, and like they're and, um, and no one sponsors us. <laughs> <laughs> no one's sponsoring us. Okay, so there's buffalo. I see buffalo style, and I see sea salt and vinegar. Oh, that sounds good. Yes. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet today because I've just been like back to back calls mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm going to. Oh, they only have. Oh, that. so there's four different flavors. There's oh, um yeah. sea salt and vinegar, uh-huh. Nashville hot, Work. buffalo, and pink salt. 
Pink salt. Eh, mm-hmm. That's a gimmick, but that's fine. Um, Himalayan pink salt. <laughs> I bet the Nashville hot flavor is really good too. I bet the Nashville hot flavor is really that sound. That just sounds really good. Damn, we'll tell it. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Hi. So, anyways, John, um, tell us about your fellowship experience in P Town that you just did. Yeah. So we talked a little bit while I was there, but it was still like kind of ramping up to everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, I didn't have a full grasp of like what exactly an artist fellowship was until like I had gone through like the whole experience. It was really cool. So basically, you're for that specific one, 20 summers, you're nominated by people, people who had been there, board members and stuff like that, and then they take a vote on whether or not to accept you. Um, so it's not like something you can apply for. It's not something that you can just like, you have to be invited, which is cool. And so I went and I met these other artists. One was a filmmaker and then one was a folk singing duo. And both of them happened, like they didn't happen to be AAPI. I was actually like, we were the first AAPI specific cohort um, mm. of that whole program, which was amazing because we, you know, when you're all in together, like, first of all, it's hard to get any amount of artists in a room, let alone like specifically like Asian ones and the things that we talked about and the things that the issues that we brought up in regards to like the things that we face as Asian American artists were very unique to our experience. So I'm glad that it happened. And so, yeah, each one of them touched on, uh, on like a very specific. So one of them was a filmmaker and she showed a film and it was like a coming of age film. It was on like the, uh, independent award film circuit. Like she was been to Sundance. She was been to, I think she's been to Sundance. I know she was at the one in Austin. I forgot what the one in Austin is called. South by Southwest. She showed there and it was just a great coming of age film, but it just happened to have smatterings of her experience as a mixed race Asian woman. Um, and then the other duo is folk singers, but they sing, um, about like Asian American history specifically. So it's really cool to hear like our stories, but played out through this like super um, like American folk like package. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. And then the thing that I did for my showcase, so one was a film, one was a concert. And the thing that I did was like, I cooked dinner. I made a dinner um, as well as giving kind of like a lecture on my philosophy and uh, my experiences around food. And I don't think I'd ever done anything like that before where I actually had, had people in a room and they were like listening to what I would say and I was cooking at the same time. And I wanted to make something that was like hyper local, but ex- but still like very like close to me and my culture. So I did make dumplings. I made pork dumplings. I made a tofu dumpling and then I did a konji, but the konji that I used, we had sourced because we were in the Chesapeake Bay. We sourced fresh scallops. We Ooh. sourced fresh quahogs, like giant big clams. And we sourced like a whole bunch of seafood and squid that they had caught, like just, just like so close by. So everything was super fresh. So we didn't even cook this. I did pretty much. We did. We, we also did foraged. Uh, we also foraged for stuff. So the kanji was made with seafood and steamed clams, but the scallops were so fresh that we just chopped them up and used that as a topping. Yeah. Um, so they had like scallop sashimi topping on their kanji. And um, instead of using green onions, they had a whole bunch of, there, there are these invasive plants called um, garlic mustard. And that sounds so good. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever it, yeah is. it is. So it just grows wild all over there. They had a whole bunch Mm -hmm. of like different types of mustard plants that were growing wild. So I literally like went out of this barn where we did the showcase and like picked them, washed them and like process them myself and use that instead of like scallions and stuff because I wanted to use things from around the area. And also I wanted to use things that was like, they're bad for the environment for existing where they are. And so um, I wanted to do that in a way that's kind of like, I don't know, giving back to that area by like 
pretty much weeding for them and then eating it. Um, yeah. And then for dessert, um, I did, I, there was a local, local Portuguese pastry shop where I bought elephant ears and I bought this thing, this Portuguese French toast. I forgot the name of it. And then on top of that, I put on this blueberry compote that I had also made with a Japanese nutweed syrup, which was also a noxious weed to the area, but it's still delicious. So use that. And yeah, I served that dinner while like talking about, <laughs> I can hear butter. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I served that while um while talking about food and food philosophy in regards to like the Asian American experience and it was like just really really cool. Um and I know we had said before that there wasn't much for eating there for going out, but I did discover some great places that I while I was there. Um there's Ooh, a restaurant called tell the tea. Oh, actually you and I had been there before. It was the place that we went to to do karaoke with, um... oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Who they serve food with? there. They do serve food there, but it was me, you, Josh, Eric, and, and Raja. We, and Raja, that's right. So we had all been there before. It was this place is called Governor Bradley, and they do mm-hmm. do like on the weekends they do um, drag drag hosted uh, karaoke, oh, but they got a new like- chef. Mm. Oh yeah, they got a new chef last year and they were doing like really interesting things like they were making like instead of clam chowder they were making it with smoked scallops. They were like, you know, uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, really interesting thing. And you could tell like this guy was taking inspiration from Japanese use of seafood and applying it to kind of like a New England style taste. So it was the menu was probably the most adventurous thing that we'd seen while we were there whereas How like the rest was point? like Price point was actually pretty affordable. I mean, like it is still like a tourist town, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, another place. Oh, there's something. There was, there was a kind of. I I don't want to call it a tourist trappy place, but it's like right where you get off on the ferry, and it's like right on the main commercial street. So it's like something Brothers Ice Cream. Um, but they had a flavor of ice cream that was like grape nuts. Like the cereal, oh. so it was like a plain ice cream that had grape nuts in it, and grape I don't nuts think I've is like this. Grape nuts. What does it taste like? Grape nuts are like this kind of like brand cereal. Like you kind of picture like grandparents eating it, and okay. it's like super like gritty and it's crunchy, but it's uh-huh. only slightly sweet. So like when it's put into ice cream, mm-hmm. the ice cream almost has this like wheat barley flavor. Mm. So it You're actually not really tastes selling me into flavor yet, but <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But like, if you picture like, it's kind of like this not too sweet, mild, weedy flavor ice cream that kind of like it's almost like a buckwheat flavored ice cream. Okay. And I and it sounds weird, but I actually like told my other cohorts on the on the fellowship about it, and the way I described it, one of them was Japanese. Um, one of the half Japanese, and she was like, "Yeah, that's that's pretty much how you described it. It's kind of like a buckwheat, not too sweet, good textured ice cream." And so that was an unexpected hit. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so that was like the thing that I went back for every day. <laughs> oh, really, the grape nut ice cream? Yeah, the grape nut ice cream. And I tried putting different things on it, but I still think my favorite things that I put on it was like crumbled Oreos. So it was like very adult flavored, but the toppings were like childhood. Youthful. <laughs> I know, youthful. Or as the chefs like to say, a whimsical take on <laughs> a dessert. <laughs> That's totally what they say. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. If somebody ever said that to me at a restaurant, uh, full faced, I would roll my. I would just burst out I would laughing. have to like. Yes. No, I wouldn't burst out laughing, but I would like roll my eyes in my heart. Like there's just like certain words a chef loves to use, like whimsical, deconstructed. Yes. My take on uh celebrate the dot dot dot. <laughs> yep. Whenever somebody says like my take on or like something something my way, I always mm-hmm. just think like they just want to cook this dish, but they don't they're afraid that it's not authentic enough, quote unquote authentic enough. And so they say that as like a way to protect themselves. It was like just colonizer, colonizer, you're a colonizer. 
<laughs> yep. Yep. I should make that into a song. You should make that into a song. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody has done that yet. I don't know because no one that does parody songs can sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Willem doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and also at the restaurant you were talking about, mm-hmm. that was when um, Raja was um talking about how there's like not much like good flavors like feed in Pete Town. So mm-hmm. we gave the chili oil that you made to her, and she was very grateful. Was she? Did she eat it? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> I never met her. I, I never saw her again after that meeting her that day. She was so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's really sweet. Mm-hmm. She's a legend. She paved the way. She did. <laughs> I'm making her sound so old. <laughs> <laughs> well, season two happened a long time ago. Yeah. Six seasons before yours. Yeah, I was a baby when season two was airing. Yeah. Yeah. I, what are you now? Uh, still younger than you. Uh <laughs> <sighs> Just remember, I will always be younger than you. You will always be younger than me. (laughs) Seven, ten years from now on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so did you have a good time overall? Would you do it again? I would totally. Well, I don't think like you can, I don't think fellowships like that, like you can do again. Like it's like a one and done thing. Oh, and I also like, I also didn't know really anything about the fellowship itself so like i started doing research on it after and they're anti-gay no they're not anti-gay they're actually they're they're very pro-gay they're pro-trump but like okay. the, the people that they've had no they're not pro-trump. the people that they've had um there like made me realize like oh wow this is like what what am i even doing here because they had like um one of the people that was there that had been there to give a talk was like Fran Lebowitz. I almost said Ann Lebowitz, but it's Fran Lebowitz. Like the writer for Law and mm-hmm. Order. You see her a lot of like her YouTube and you see a lot of clips from her on like TikTok. She's this like curly haired, shorter lady who's like super, like professionally grumpy, but super smart. Um, She was on Z-Way. I think she was okay. one of her first guests on Z-Way. Um, Rest in peace, Zoe. I know that was such a good show. What was the best thing thinking? that Showtime has done? Literally, since, like, the, the original only, queerest folk. Yeah, like the only relevant thing about Showtime was Z-Way, and I don't. What the hell is on there now? Nothing. Yeah, it's like dumb. I only subscribe to um, Showtime just to see, just to watch Z-Way. Yeah. Well, I hope now. she goes somewhere else. Bye bye. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Who else was there? Monica Lewinsky was there. At that oh. uh, fellowship, giving talk about bullying. Um, <laughs> yep. What else would she would she talk about? Like she was she the wasn't original she give lectures and like making purses. <laughs> Wait, is that what she does now? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Jeremy O'Harris was there, which you know he's a friend of mine. But I was just like, I'm just so happy that we have that in common now. And I think I saw Cynthia Nixon on there too. Work. Yeah. And, and me, <laughs> little old Kong, little me. So Monica Lewinsky, Cynthia Nixon, and John Kong. Yes, that is quite the yes. lineup. <laughs> yes, that's that is that is the that's the lineup. That's the lineup. Um, you know what I'm really excited about? What? My birthday, <laughs> which is coming up in August. Okay, so what are we doing for your birthday? So this year, um. We're going on a little getaway trip to Mexico. Where's the way? Where, where, where are we going? Puerto Vallarta. The oh, is that what that? Yeah, That's but is that what it's called? Right? What's what is Mexico? Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Okay, sorry, I did not. I was like, mate, what? I am sorry, Mexico? Michigan. Okay. <laughs> okay, you said Mexico, and I was like, where is that? I said Mexico. Oh, Mexico. All right. Well, thanks. No habla español? No. I Ay, guess not in, not in that. Not whatever that dialect is. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> did you just dialect shame me, you colonizer? 
How can I be a colonizer? I don't know. It's just fun to call people colonizer and then see how they react. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to Puerto Vallarta. So every year for my birthday, we go on these um, fun little trips. Um, one year we went to Joshua Tree and then we went to um, Joshua Tree again. And then, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we went to Big Bear one year. This and is the first time we're going out of the country. Yeah. Um. And I feel like we wanted, like, the full experience of, like, having a chef. And I have this fantasy of, like, being first one to wake up in the morning, smelling the ocean breeze, and then drinking my morning coffee. as like, the chef is preparing our breakfast for the group. as everybody's slowly waking up one by one. Like, good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Here. Here's a fresh pot of coffee. Come join me in the terrace. <laughs> Well, that's never going to happen. Why? You're never going to wake up before I do. I always wake up before you. You do not always wake up before me. That's if anything, like... Yes. What? <laughs> you, you took that very personally. I am a Oh, you do person. always wake up before... Because you do... At these trips, you're always... You fall asleep through all of them. No, I fall asleep first. Yes, you fall asleep. You do fall asleep first at these, uh, these trips. So that is And I'm true. the first one to wake up. <laughs> and you're like, where the hell is everybody? <laughs> you know, I just like waking up at like a consistent time. You know, I, lo- mm-hmm. I love a schedule. I guess you do. Um, so who's who's coming? Um, so a bunch of our friends from San Francisco. Um, Naomi Money is also coming. That's um, going to be a really great way to like rope them into doing the podcast. Oh, I mean, does Monet really need to be doing another podcast? I feel like I don't. I don't think she needs another reason to do another podcast. She's got like twelve. She like she literally has like twelve podcast things going on, and you know, like How does I mean, anyone have that much to talk about? Like I mean, we never run out of things to talk about personally because we're talking about food. Yeah, but like, but like, you know, I feel like I'm like sharing like how my week was, you know, like with everybody here. But, like, for me, like, beyond this, like, what else do you want me to say? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you can only have so many opinions and so many life events. They'd be to 14 podcasts. And mm-hmm. if they're, like, hour, anywhere, like 30 minutes to an hour. 30 minutes to an hour. That's mm-hmm. so much. And I feel like that's also, like, how you end up saying, like, controversial things, you know? Because you're, like, mm-hmm. making up opinions, too, you know? About... Well, Random subjects that like you wouldn't have normally like give thoughts about. She hasn't been canceled yet. I'm not talking about Monet like oh. in particular. <laughs> I'm just talking about like people that have a lot to say. It's you know? true. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like you know, it all it takes is like one bad sound clip, one bad sound bite, mm-hmm. and then it's like over for you. Which we would never wish on that. She's our friend, and we love her. But like, or anyone, damn. actually, yeah. not not anyone, but. No, not anyone. Like, Ben Shapiro can, like, go to hell. <laughs> I realize, like, uh, how much of, like, a bubble I live in, like, here in L.A., like, when I go online. Because, mm-hmm. you know, like, I noticed there's, like, a thread of people who was, like, actually against, like, the writers getting paid more. Uh, and I'm like... Well, I do the, well, the producers and, like, the executives, yeah, because mm-hmm. then they have to share their money. Exactly. And, and it's not even getting paid more. It's getting mm-hmm. paid for like their work on another. Like, so the from, from what I understand is the writers are not getting paid from their for their streams. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like if that is true. I mean, back in the paid, day, like you know, like Friends or like you know, Roseanne, like Golden Girls, they make so much money off of syndication, and right, Netflix syndication. just kind of like change industry in a way, you know. Yeah, but like that's like saying like your favorite musician can't get get can't get paid every time like it gets your song gets paid on played on Spotify or Apple Music like mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. Every time somebody enjoys your work, Agreed. you should get something for your work. Agree, and a livable wage, and a livable wage, and like they're gonna say like you know what? these 
freaking executives are all saying stuff like, oh, we can replace you with chat GBT or something like that. Like, no, sorry, you're not going to, it's not there yet where it comes up with like clever original content. You're not going to build a universe, a world, a trilogy using chat GBT. Like it's good for like finding patterns and stuff and, and trends and like understanding like, you know, that kind of like, if anything, more mathematical equations, if anything, like the job of like the CEO and the executive would probably be mm. more easily done by freaking chat GBT than, it, than the job of a writer. But it's like the fact that like the CEOs get paid like millions of dollars and like, yeah, these like writers like, you know, can't even pay like their basic bill. Like it's so messed up. Yeah. Uh, let's not, let's Again, not go okay, on the We keep doing that. We can. I think we should have just changed the the po- name of the podcast, the podcast called, to like, John- Kim and John hates America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> not the America, down- but like the structure of America and is yeah. capitalism. <laughs> no, we should just rename it to the downward spiral with Kim and John. Uh-huh. It's like, <laughs> what is John and Kim upset about this week? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, and then right, also, well, you know, like. You know, we see people, you know, like po- police, like policing, like racists and like mm-hmm. transphobes, like in our lives all the time, you know, which like as they should. But yeah. then you easily go into like Instagram or TikTok and like read the comments, and there's so mm-hmm. much racist and like transphobic comments and people like that, you know, like agree with them. And I'm like, yeah. who are these people? Like, where do they come from? And you're like, they're not, the thing is, like, people like that aren't, are usually, not anywhere near around us mm-hmm. and but they just feel like entitled to police our lives and that's it and why do all these fucking like racist transphobic guys their profile pictures they're wearing a cap with sunglasses and have a beard and white yes they all look exactly that, the same or or if or for some reason they're an anime profile picture or um, picture of like a K-pop star. Yes, yes. Why on Twitter? Like it's the worst of them. Are like, how are you a K-pop stan, but at the same time like racist? Yes. <laughs> and of course, there are like K-pop stands, you know, that are for the greater good. But also, of course, yes. Uh, but I'm automatically like aware of like any accounts with like a K-pop like photo as like an icon. Mm, it's suspicious. Same with anime PFPs. I'm just like, mm-hmm. mm, okay, you have more work to do to get to the level that everyone else is at. Yep. I need to see some good things said from you. But on that note, that's our show. <laughs> no, we still have a lot to talk about. <laughs> but well, so, we ran out of time. We make the time. There's no like, the podcast doesn't cut off after a certain time. We make yeah, it, but we have, to fo- we have to follow a specific like structure so it's like more consistent and people like that consistency. No, didn't you see like the latest review? This article was like 10 7 best drag queen podcast to listen to. I did see that. I'm on a drag podcast, and that made me happy. And you know what it literally says about us? Here, let me read it, it to you. What did, it, what did they say about us? Oh my god, <laughs> it literally says. The hosts also keep each episode fresh by frequently changing the podcast structure. (laughs) Oh, well, that's just my ADD. Honestly, John is to be blamed for most of our downfall. I haven't paid your pardon. Um, (laughs) He just said what we're doing is good. Is it a he? I don't know who the person is. They? They? Is it a they? I don't know. When in doubt, just use they. they're They're always a they, yeah. Not always a they. (laughs) Well, they're always, yeah. At the very least, they are there. Yes. <laughs> but yes, um, we are keeping the episode fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, um, that's our time. Oh, so my mom is visiting um, for this week. <laughs> Wait, when well, she is? Yeah. Why didn't you say that earlier? What are you going to do? I'm thinking now. Oh. I mean, I wasn't trying to talk about my mom this episode. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I'm about to like go out and take her to um Shabu Shabu tonight. Oh, Shabuya? Um, there's a new place called Bon Shabu, which is um also really nice. Uh-huh. It's clean. Um, and they have tomato broth as a broth option. Oh, tomato which broth is delicious, yes. and I love tomato oh hot pot broth. 
if they ever do like a the seafood tomato broth is also really good. Mm, well, next time I'll, you come to LA, I'll take you here. I think you'll really like this place. Mm, please. Also, that like I have this consistent idea that I'm going to do apart from making the hua jiao bing in the uh, pizza oven, I mm-hmm. also want to do like a hot pot crab boil, a hot pot lob seafood boil. Oh, like not and, just like ha- go halvesies on it. Like make mm-hmm. just a giant intensely hot pot like hot pot. Yeah. And then just make a seafood boil out of that. Well, you know how to do it now. I will. And don't you have like, like a backyard? Yeah, uh, I have a side lot. Yeah, but yeah, same, same. same. Yeah, yeah, I have land. Mm-hmm. Well, let me know when that's happening. I might. Uh, no, I'm not going for that. Yeah. yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Anything that you can do, you can do all your work from here. The, you know. And it's a night, and the weather is nice. The weather is nice. Maybe just like do Motor City Pride. (laughs) Fuck me, Motor City Pride again. Where John (laughs) and I met. It'll be full circle. It totally, actually, that would be poetic. We could do like a round table if people here were into that, but they're not. Mm. Or maybe I'll come for Motor City Pride. Who knows? Maybe I'll DJ. (gasps) Kika, 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 Kika. Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah, I'm booked me and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go anywhere I'm booked. <laughs> Anyways, with that being said, I'll be regret to inform you um, that I'm signing up to um, take my mom around town. Well, have fun. Tell her I say hello. She doesn't know you, so I probably won't do that. You don't talk about me to your mom? No. Wait, why? I don't know. Why do you tell your... Why don't Asian sons communicate with their mom about everything that's going on in their life? I mean, that's that is a that is a good point, but that doesn't mean it hurts any less. Do you tell your mom about me? I'm pretty sure she listens to this podcast. Oh, she does. Oh, Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, she still doesn't know you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that's our show. Uh, thanks for listening. And what is it, the thing that you normally say, Kim? Why don't you say it this time? I Switch up the format and keep it fresh. I don't know. I don't know what you say. I said, please like, subscribe, share, and don't be a hater. Because we don't like haters. I don't know. I feel like that's what I say. Did I change up the format somehow? Did I keep it fresh? Ha, 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 ha.